Hey, hey, what's up, everyone? This is Monday Mornings once again. It is Movement Mondays, and we just want to be uh, grateful this morning, despite everything that is going around uh, the world around us. Um, yet we can still give thanks and praise to God this morning for uh, all that he continually does. Um, glad that you are able to join us wherever you are joining us from. And uh, our prayer is that uh, you are safe and that uh, God is blessing your family and keeping you safe as well during this time of COVID-19. Um, I'm excited as we go into the second part of uh, my session with Pastor Tulanga Ailupatea. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm going to ask you just to go ahead and share this uh, session um, on your page and just share the love. And I know it's going to bless somebody uh, because today we're going to be talking about um, what he does, um, not necessarily um, in terms of pastoral work, um, but as an artist, I think you are going to be blessed as you listen to his story about him using his uh, gifts. And uh, so this morning, I pray that God is, is definitely blessing you. And uh, as we do come together, we pray that we can encourage one another in this journey. Now, I do want you to know that we have a Facebook page up where everything um, related to this uh, Movement Mondays is going to be there. So go ahead and check it out. And um, it was just a way to streamline everything that we do to find it all in one place. So I'm excited and I hope that uh, you will join us on this journey uh, just to learn more and to see what Movement Mondays uh, is all about. Um, Pastor Tulanga Lupita, he shared with us last week um, some seven points from the story of David. And I'm going to go into that um, and just share with you um, what his um, points were. And uh, seven points. The first one was that it's God's battle, not your battle. Um and the second one was that step up, you know, whatever it was. And it wasn't, uh, it did not happen until David was able to step up to the plate and really um, put his gifts into, into play um, to fight, you know, the giant. And uh, number three is using the name of the Lord. And there is no other name. Um, by which we will be saved um, and that we which we will be uh, able to get strength and power from um, then by the name of uh, the Lord. Uh, number four is to use your gifts, no matter how small, no matter how big your gifts are. God has given you those gifts for a reason. And he alluded to the fact that he was using a slingshot. This was something that he used over and over. It was something that looked insignificant, but it made a big impact. Number five, find the weaknesses in the giant and he looked for the place which was exposed even though the giant was covered from top to bottom with armor yet he found that place that was exposed and that's um, what he used to bring the the the, the, the giant down uh, trust in the Lord the the Lord you know when we trust in him um, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path the Bible says um, and so just Trust in the Lord uh, with all your heart and, you know, just don't lead on your own understanding. And the last one, number seven, is celebrate. Celebrate when those giants do fall. Celebrate. Um, so those were the seven points that he went through last week. Now, this week, as we go through it, um, some of you know him as pastor, as yeah, last week he spoke of himself being a disciple, a husband, a father. But this week he's going to speak directly to uh, him being a artist. And, uh, you know, like I said last week, I'm excited uh, for his journey, just being able to see him um, as a young man. He was younger than I am growing up in P-Town, Paro, uh, in Wellington, and uh, just to see the giftedness that he had back then and just seeing him use it for uh, the kingdom. So, you know, um, I know that today's session um, is going to resonate with you and using your gifts, and I hope that that will be something that you will walk away with and be encouraged by. Um, so I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and I will lead us out in a word of prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for waking us up this morning. 
We thank you, dear God, for your blessings. And uh, Father, your blessings are just new every morning. And like it says in the book of Lamentations, Lord, great is your faithfulness towards us. Uh, many of us, Lord, went to sleep and um, woke up this morning and uh, we're just fresh and revived. Um, other side of the world is just about to go to sleep. And so we pray, Lord, that wherever we are in this journey around this world, that, Father, we can continue to rely and just trust in you. Uh, we thank you for your love, your protection upon us during this time of COVID-19. And we just pray, Lord, that you would just be with us and be with our families and friends and just keep us uh, 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 safe, uh, even though we may be distanced from each other, Lord. But may we be connected today than ever before. Uh, we thank you and we love you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless and uh, enjoy. The things in which you spoke about very important is, uh, I believe it was number four and it had to do with your gifts. Mm -hmm. And uh, each person has been given a particular gift or gifts from God. And it really is a question of how are we using those gifts to further mm. God's kingdom? And so we mm. just want to segue into the gifts that God has given you. And uh, I just want to start that by saying, you know, like I said in the beginning, um, just watching um, the younger ones growing up in church and using their gifts, we saw in you, um, you know, this art thing was something that you had embraced long before, um, you know, any of the stuff that you are doing today. Uh, mm. One of the avenues I remember um, you using your creativity and innovativeness was uh, through rap. Uh, mm. I don't know if you remember the the rap that that you guys did, um, yep. but it, it was just a whole different um, parts of gifts that you were experimenting and using in that time. And yes. it's very uh, interesting, uh, mm. as you have spoken, you know, that you have gone back into those gifts and looked at those gifts. Mm. And uh, one of the things that you have branded yourself is that you used to be uh, part of using it for vandalism, uh, mm -hmm. but now you're using your gifts for evangelism. Um, yeah, so just speak a little much. bit about that. Maybe just speak a little bit first on um, what your giftedness is. What is something that you have seen um, from uh, using it in the past to what you're using um, right now? Yeah, uh, just going back to what you were saying at church, you know, coming from a family of creativity, mm. uh, it wasn't encouraged. It's not going to get you a job. Um, the only creativity that my dad was interested in was church and school. Mm -hmm. And so we would just draw on the walls, and that will be the reason why we uh, get into trouble. And, <laughs> um, and so we started drawing on the church, and uh, mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the pews were, were our canvases, and that was our, pretty much our first um, our murals, if you were to say. And uh, it just became um, something we never noticed. But basically, I give, uh, I praise God that. He allowed me to uh, experience the, the hip-hop culture in Porirua, mm. uh, in Wellington, because it's such a huge and strong-rooted uh, culture uh, in um, New Zealand, of Aotearoa hip-hop. And it was um, an adoption uh, that uh, myself and my brothers and, and, and a lot of us in Porirua mm -hmm. were growing up at the time that gave us um, this, this identity. Mm. Um, we couldn't connect with the church. We couldn't find our place. Um, no one understood us, or we didn't understand ourselves or them. And uh, being a Kiwi, we were told to go home, mm, back to mm. Samoa, but I'm not from there. Yes, um, yes. But, you know, you try to be a Samoan or whatever it looked like be a, as a Kiwi born. And uh, we just lost, we just couldn't connect with those worlds. Mm. And so hip hop was the only um, expression that spoke to us mm -hmm. uh, young people in the late 80s and early 90s yeah. that uh, we just thought this is us. This is what's going to give us uh, something to, to live and die for. Mm. So we, yeah, we got into it. And, um, but out of all the elements, rapping and um, was was a way of expressing ourselves verbally. But I wasn't much of a talker. I was really a quiet dude. Mm. And I didn't really um, – but I did it because it was really cool. We were able to do it live on stage, all underground uh, stuff. 
but I had this fond passion for for graffiti yeah. art, and so that became um, such a such a huge part of my 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 journey. But not realizing that's going to, one day it's going to be used for for connecting with people in the community, mm-hmm. uh, and so I just vandalized and vandalized. And vandalism is basically uh, for graffiti. Vandalism is all about uh, where you apply it. It's an mm-hmm. application issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a, a craft issue uh, because graffiti, as an art form, is a beautiful art form. But where you apply it. Uh, if it's applied on a property that you had no permission uh, to do or mm-hmm. just, yeah, that's when it becomes um, vandalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's unwanted. And sometimes we growing up in a church, um, I think sometimes people vandalize the gospel by mm-hmm. just, just uh, bombing people's lives without their permission. And, putting uh, putting just, a different type of gospel that uh, wasn't intended, right? Yeah, or yeah. they never really uh, asked for it, or mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah, and so I that changed the way I do ministry because I no one likes to be preached that, mm. uh, be told what to do or something like that, especially when it's someone who's not familiar with uh, the world of Christianity. Mm-hmm. And so that gave me uh, an insight of how to apply the gospel wow. Wow. in such a way without mm-hmm. vandalizing it, but actually um, just. Uh, yeah, making connections with you mm, and the mm. and the wall, uh, and so yeah, and so I just thought no more vandalism. Mm. Uh, it actually doesn't hurt just to ask. Yeah, can yeah, I yeah. can I beautify your wall? Yeah, uh, you have an awesome garage. Could I chuck in a butterfly? Um, and uh, what's your daughter's name? I could write her name on on the wall and and just connecting with the people. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and so. From vandalism to evangelism is it's such a, a paradigm shift mm-hmm. uh, without hurting anyone and getting uh, myself into trouble. And so, wow, wow, yeah. wow. So, uh, so, you know, just kind of uh, going off something that you said, um, you've learned through art, the lessons that you, you have learned through art is what you have applied um, to reaching people with the gospel. Um, yes. Would it be like um, would it be like a canvas, right? A person is like a canvas and getting their permission um, to be able to paint a beautiful picture of the gospel. And so Absolutely. even when you're painting, right, as a graffiti artist, um, it's done in layers. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's done in layers. Um, it's it's raw mm-hmm. and um and not so much asking them for permission to paint the gospel. I guess when we connect with people, yeah, have a conversation, yeah. or meet someone, you're you're adding you're adding color to their lives because of who you are. Mm-hmm. And they and pe- the reason why people connect and get to know each other, become friends, mm-hmm. because they love the color or the the the, per- the person that you are, uh, what you believe in, what you say, and they just love it. And so what you've done, you've made an effect on them. Mm-hmm. And so they be- they become the mural, and they and they add value to who you are. And so mm-hmm. we're painting each other's um, um, spaces mm-hmm. that we're able to give uh, perspective, concepts, ideas, uh, and just blabbering. Uh, that becomes a t- it becomes a a combination or a team effort of painting a a a a picture of life just by having a conversation yes yes. so it's such a huge connection between graffiti art and um and -hmm. gospel work Mm -hmm. so how have you been able to use it right now so um i've seen some pictures i've seen you do some walls um i've seen it as a way to connect and uh you know conversations in your community tell us all about that Oh man, it's been such a huge journey. I've been I've been loving it, and I and I praise God for for this opportunity. It's yeah, no, I just I, I if I if I had a choice, I'd actually quit my job and do that full time. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I but but it's 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 definitely become a, a, a holistic thing, and mm. so yeah, no, um, I guess the recent piece I I did, um, one of the big ones was uh, hope, faith, and love. Mm. And uh, what that was about, because I had a, a good brother of mine, um, just another cousin, uh, is a good uh, writer from Gore, which is one of the towns up the uh, up 
up uh, up north. Anyway, um, he told me that uh, there's a, a lot of young people just getting uh, into uh, into trouble and uh, and suicide mm. in their town. And so I said, man, why don't we do a suicide prevention? And because people are so into um, graffiti and and they connect with the walls and it attracts them. And I thought, why don't we just do a big bombing that they can read? And so the style that we, the application that we did on the wall was negative spaces. Mm -hmm. And so the negative spaces, so when people look at it, they don't see the word hope or faith. Mm -hmm. And so my wife, when she first saw it, she thought it was a monster. Mm -hmm. And I had to explain to her and show her this is an H. And so you've really got to look at it. And some people who are natural uh, at just looking at negative spaces. And so the, the whole concept was how to use negative spaces with positive words mm. that can be barely seen that will encourage uh, young people to to don't uh, don't go down that dark road mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and just take their own life. and uh, which helps to connect with young people. And so one day I rocked up to number ten, which is a youth drop-in center in Invercargo. And um, yeah, and I've been become a part of their um, street art wow. Wow. Uh, workshop, and so this is my second uh, year with them. Wow! And we're we're just getting a, we're just getting ready to to deal with some young men who mm -hmm. uh, have no connections with their fathers, mm -hmm. uh, who have issues with self image, and they're big heavy hitters, you know. And so these young men. Um, just need direction or a purpose. So they're wanting to use street art as a way to keep in touch with their emotions. They have so many issues with the emotions. They don't even know the difference between anger and um, and just being happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're so used to being angry. Mm -hmm. And to them, it's they, they, it's, it's normal. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's, that's really um, a challenging time for these young people. So, so that's been my space. Mm -hmm. of uh of influence and that's where most of my evangelism and just connecting and doing life with these young people uh is that when it comes to mm -hmm. graffiti or mm -hmm. street art so, mm -hmm. love uh, I've, I've i've seen uh some of the art um sometimes you would put a time lapse um you know of you painting certain things and it looks like yeah. that you're never alone um you always you always have a few uh young kids that are there with you uh, oh, yeah. you know, is, is was that intentional for you? Yeah, you picked it up. Yeah, um, never write alone. Um, I thank God for uh, other writers, uh, other graffiti writers mm -hmm. who have mentored me and just said, Man, always take someone with you mm -hmm. because, um, you know, even though most writers uh, uh, uh have their own uh, identity mm -hmm. and most of them are unknown, but you always have a crew. And so having a crew, that's where life comes from. That's where the issues of, of who you are, that's where you grow. You're always bouncing ideas with people. And this crew is almost like a small group is what we call in our Christianity yes. world. Yes. And so this little small group is where discipleship uh, or just just encouraging, inspiring your, your peers that you always got to pass on your skill and your techniques to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a really important thing. So I never do it alone. Uh, there are times where it's just you. Yeah, you wanted yeah. to do your thing because when you're sharing it with someone, but at the same time, you can still do yourself like me and um, another guy, Tane. He did his own style and I did my own style, but it was a collaborate um, sure. uh, uh, um, yeah, project. So mm. yeah, mm. definitely have to take someone with you. That's Always. awesome, man. That's awesome. I know that our time is up and That's cool. um, you know we just want to thank you for just sharing and just encouraging, you know, I think one of the things is just encouraging whatever it is that, you know, has been part of your story, part of your your experience growing up. Um, don't discard yeah. that. Uh, maybe that's the very thing that God wants you to use, uh, Absolutely. you know, uh, as as you go out into uh, your community. That may be the thing that may connect you with people. Um, yes. That may not come to your church. And, you know, it's mm. the idea that you are the church. So whenever you step out into your oh, yes. community, um, you're connecting with them through whatever giftedness that God has already placed on your heart. Um, mm. And uh, just like Pastor Tulanga, um, he's able to have gospel conversations with people and grow with them um, and just point them to 
you know, he who gives us life. And uh, mm. I think that there's there's a lot That's to right. be said about that. Uh, maybe we'll have to get you here for a second time and just share a little bit about uh, more about it, um, because it's very interesting um, just to hear some of the stories that you have encountered. Uh, maybe we can do that another time. Um, Absolutely. But we thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing with us this morning. Hey, thank you. And, Thanks uh, for this uh, opportunity. Mm. Oh, man. Just uh, give awesome. us one more word. Um, and just to encourage, what would you want to leave with the listeners this morning? And also then just pray for them. And uh, as we bring this to a close. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, um, yeah, my encouragement to us. Yeah, just step up to the wall and um, and just spray uh, mm. your life away in, in the trust of the Lord. And then the Lord will allow you to direct your slingshot. And um, it's not always going to get, get it, but just keep on hitting it. Uh, wherever the giants may be, but uh, they are and can be conquered. And so all the best men out there and, uh, as you continue to conquer your giants. Amen. But, uh, Amen. Yeah, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for stepping up to our giants. And Lord, we are it. And we ourselves stop us from, from stepping up, uh, taking courage, uh, especially when we are afraid to actually commit to, and even just stepping up is a huge step. And so, Lord, we just want to thank you for the opportunity for us to to get into um, a shepherd's head and how he became a king over his giants. And so, Lord, we just ask that you will bless every viewer um, listening in, that you will help them to conquer uh, their giants, whether it's a small, uh, short one or a large, huge, um, gigantic a challenge. Hmm. So we just ask for strength and to, yeah, find those weaknesses that we can hit that only you can allow us to see. So thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to encourage each other as men. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I hope that you have been blessed by Pastor Tulanga Ailu Pater, who uh, lives and does ministry. Uh, down in the South Island of New Zealand. Um, we really thank him for sharing his heart and uh, just being able to put a challenge out to us. I mean, some of the takeaways that I had from this session was from e from vandalism to evangelism. And uh, instead of just going up to a wall and just bombing it, ask. Ask if you can beautify a space. And this is an example of just taking what God has given you the gifts that he has given to you, um, you may discard it just like he was saying, um, but use it, use it as a way to connect. And I think this relates to the story of Moses, um, where God was telling him, Hey, I need you to go up to Pharaoh. I need you to, I need you to bring out the children of Egypt, uh, the children of Israel. And, uh, as he was doing this and as he was, uh, trying to find every excuse in, 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 in his arsenal uh, to put it before God, um, God says, what's in your hand? And he said, it's a rod. And he said, well, I want you to use it. And uh, I believe that whatever excuse that we may have of not using the tools and the gifts that God has given to us, um, no matter how big the task may look, understand this, that God is saying, what's in your hand? And uh, you may have for now, you may have your cell phone in your hand. You may have a, a spray can in your hand, a pen, whatever it is that God has placed on you in your heart. Um, I know that he will equip you and that will be the thing that God will work through you to reach those in your community. I pray that God will bless you. I hope that you will have a great uh, week. It is Monday here in North America. It is uh, Monday evening where you are in um, the South Pacific, whether it be New Zealand, Australia. We're glad that you are joining us and we pray that God would just bless you on this journey until we meet again next Monday. So God bless you all and thank you so much for joining us once again.